Okay guys, um, intro to business, chapter one, we're going to start from the very beginning. This way you have everything. This, um, this broadcast is brought to you by, sponsored by Brooklyn Body Gear. So you, uh, the best underwear money can buy. Okay. Okay, let's get this started. So guys, we're going to start from the very beginning. Remember, forums every week, you have to answer the forum. Uh, I want to start this from the very beginning so you know exactly um, what's going on from the whole semester. Okay? So here we go. Here we go. So, um, we talked about free enterprise, uh, decided what to produce, how to produce it, and uh, what price to sell it as. Okay? So, that's what free enterprise is. We already talked about this. Okay? Um, what's business? There's four major, um, four major uh, resources for business. Human resources, people, Okay, material resources, factories, the product that they make. Okay, informational resources, IT, and financial resources, which is only money. Okay, uh, for Brooklyn Body Gear, human resources, the people that work for the company. Okay, material resources, which we already know. Material resources, okay, the underwear, the factory, the material itself. Okay, informational resources, my computer, um, my computer information and all the technology that's involved and financial resources, the money to actually create this product. Okay, um, three different types of business. Service business, manufacturing business, and the intermediary. Service business, haircuts, manicure, anything, uh, auto repair shops, restaurants. Okay, manufacturing businesses that actually make the stuff. Um, I don't know why it says Sony here, but it shouldn't say Sony. But figure like a Sony or an Intel or a company that actually manufactures the products. And the market intermediaries, the people that sell the products that are manufactured. So, um, you might have uh, Best Buy, okay, or um, Stop and Shop or ShopRite. Okay, e-business, of course, selling uh, through, through uh, the internet, okay, through websites, okay, Amazon obviously the most famous for e-business. Okay, the relationship between uh, revenues and profit. Remember, sales revenue, guys. Sales revenue is all the money that comes in minus what the expenses are is gonna be your profit. So, as you can see, sales revenue. So, for example, Brooklyn Body Gear, I sell it for $14, $14, my expenses. Uh, it costs me $5 per item, $7 for Amazon, that's $12. My profit is $2, right? 14 minus Seven minus five is twelve. Two dollars is my profit. Okay. Um, a stakeholder, everybody that has a stake in the business. Okay, that doesn't. That's not only a shareholder. There's a difference between a shareholder and a stakeholder. Stakeholder, everybody that has a stake in the business. Customers, factories for Starbucks, the people who make the goods, who pe people who actually make the the roasting companies, the Factories that actually produce the beans, the landlords, the cup guy, the napkin people, the workers, the customers. If Starbucks goes uh, bankrupt or closes a few stores, um, it's going to affect me. It's ha I have a stake in Starbucks doing well and Starbucks not doing well. Okay? Okay, economics, how well is created and distributed. There's microeconomics, think about the prefix micro, micro, smaller in reference to individual companies, macro on a much larger level on a global scale. Okay? Factors of productions. Here are the four factors of productions. N land and natural resources, labor, of course people, capital, which is the money and the facilities that are involved, and entrepreneurship, the fact that you would want to uh, be an entrepreneur and want to start a business yourself. Okay? The economy system is uh, the, how society uh, creates and distributes wealth. Okay? What's going to be produced? Who's going to be produced it for? Who's going to own the factors of production? For whom the goods are going to be made for? And how are the goods going to be produced? Okay? Uh, we've discussed this already. Capitalism. Capitalism, economic system, where the majority of businesses are owned by individuals or companies. Okay, Invisible Hand, uh, Adam Smith, who said that uh, individual own personal wealth. Every time someone buys something, it helps the next person, which helps the next person, which helps the next person. This is why spending is always part of the economy. When spending 
uh, gets reduced. Um, it affects everybody. People start losing their jobs. Okay, so laissez-faire capitalism, let them do. Right to create wealth, right to own property, right to economic freedom, and, and limited government intervention. This is where capitalism is different than the next two systems of uh, government. Okay, um, okay, market economy, uh, laissez-faire, let them do, describes this capitalistic approach. The main thing is let business run itself. Government should only be responsible for, government should only be responsible for, um, where it should, where is, where is that, um, okay? The government should only be responsible for uh, public works, sanitation, and uh, military. That's what his idea is, okay? But we don't have a full market economy. We have a mixed economy because there are some aspects of socialism. For example, um, the postal service is owned by the government, uh, Medicare, government health, government health plans um, is owned by the government, run by the government, Social Security. So we have a mixed economy. We don't have a full market economy. Okay? A command economy is where the government decides what to produce. There's two kinds, socialism and communism. Socialism is government decides what to produce. You can have small businesses, but the majority of the major factors of production are owned by the government. Key industries are owned by the government. The idea of it is to uh, reduce inequality. We know that there's inequality in this country. We want to reduce inequality. So, if the government has more control, then they can reduce inequality. Okay, that's socialism. Most of the countries in Western Europe are socialist countries, cradle to grave, which is why their taxes are a little higher to pay for these kinds of uh, social programs. Okay, education is free. Uh, Health care is free, but, all, but nothing is really free. It all comes from taxes. Okay? And then there's communism, where the government owns all forms of production. Communism that we know of today um, does not exist in the communism that Marx and Engels really talked about, and that's to reduce uh, complete inequality, a complete classless system. The communism that we see today is really totalitarianism. Uh, so it is really not uh, true communism in the way that Marx and Engels thought about communism, because communism on some level is not a bad idea, it just forgets the part about greed. Greed um, is human nature, and we're probably not at that point in our lives to determine that greed uh, is not important to us. Okay, so, communism, classless society, government owns everything, you do, the credit, credit, and you contribute according to your ability. Uh, and you're receiving benefit according to your need. So what you put in is what you're going to get out, but it's going to create a classless society. Okay? Gross domestic product, the total amount of goods and services produced in a year by, by in the country. Of course, most Western countries have a very high GDP. Um, inflation, general rise in prices. Deflation, lowering of prices. Inflation, on some level, is not a bad thing, as long as the inflation is kept in check. With inflation, um, wages rise, um, productivity rises, deflation is actually worse than inflation. Of course, we don't want inflation to be 2,000% like it is in Venezuela. But inflation on any level, on a small level, is really not bad. Deflation on any level is not a good thing because deflation means prices go down, which means wages go down, which means people uh, lose their jobs. Okay? Uh, I think we don't have to know this. Uh, the business cycle. Um, we discussed this as a peak recession, uh, trough, and recovery. We are probably right here in the recovery, but now with this coronavirus, we're probably going to be falling back a little bit. So even though we're in a peak, possibly the peak, but it probably went from here to here. Okay, we might start falling into a recession. Hopefully not, but we're going to see how this goes. But uh, know the four phase and phase of the business cycle, and it keeps going. It just keeps continuing. Okay. A monetary policy, the Federal Reserve decisions that determine the size of the supply of money uh, and the level of interest rates. Read the newspaper, you guys, especially now with this coronavirus, read the newspaper, see what is going on in the news. Because of what's going on in the economy, the government is stepping in, reduce interest rates. Interest rates now are almost zero, which means that if you wanted to get a mortgage right about now, you'd be able to get a mortgage rate at about 3%. Okay, so the Fed step in. Um, so look what it says here. 
Should the Federal Reserve have the power it has? Is it wise to try to manipulate the business cycle? Of course it is. Um, because if we just let things go as it is, if we did complete laissez-faire capitalism now, we would probably be in a recession at this moment. Okay, but the government can step in, uh, print more money, create more supply, change interest rates, which actually will help our economy. Okay, the deficit is the shortfall that the government spends more than it brings in. We are in a deficit right now. Okay, no different than your own credit card bills. Okay, if you have, if you have a bill of $500 and you can only pay $300, then you are in a deficit and you are charged interest, just like you're charged interest in the bank. Um, our government is charged interest on these loans to keep our government running and our country running. So because of that, we're in a deficit and China pretty much is holding bonds and that's what bonds are for. We're lending the government money. Uh, the last time we didn't have a deficit was during Bill Clinton's time where he raised taxes and we had a surplus that was right before 2000 and then of course uh, September 11th um, and the war started and of course we went back into uh, a deficit and we're in a deficit right now. Okay, and the way to reduce it is to think about your own credit card. How can you reduce your deficit? You can either get another job which in government terms is raise taxes, or you can reduce your spending, which is don't buy that extra pair of sneakers. So, what are you going to do and what's the government going to do? And this is what uh, the difference between Republicans and Democrats uh, talk about constantly, or actually fight about constantly. Okay, four types of competition, rivalry amongst businesses. There's perfect, monopolistic, oligopoly, and monopoly. Okay, don't get confused between monopolistic and monopoly. These are two different things. Perfect competition, okay, is when there's many suppliers, but they're selling the exact same product, okay? Apples, oranges, something, some kind of commodity that they are selling exactly the same. Perfect competition is everybody selling the exact same thing, and it's dependent on supply and demand, okay? No restrictions, okay? All sellers sell basically the same product. Imagine going to a farmer's market, everybody sells apples. It's going to be based on... Uh, supply and demand. Look at what's going on now with toilet paper. Imagine if everybody had the same toilet paper. If you're based on supply and demand, we know the demand is high, which means you'd be able to raise the prices. Okay? Uh, that is perfect competition. Okay? Like I said, based on supply and demand. And as you can see, the supply and demand curve here. Okay? Prices go up. And as prices go up, um, the demand is going to come down. So here's the, the sweet spot. We want to try to make the most amount of money while still keeping people wanting to buy the products. Okay? If toilet paper was now $20, depending on uh, what the situation is, the demand would probably decrease. Okay? Monopolistic is many buyers and sellers selling similar products but not the exact same product. Most businesses are monopolistic. Think about it. Brooklyn Body Gear is a monopolistic competition because I'm competing with Calvin Klein, I'm competing with Jockey, I'm competing with Haynes. We sell a similar product, but not exactly the same. Each one has a different value proposition. And that is try and that's where you gain the competitive edge. What is my, why would my product be better than the other guy's product, and why would you buy one product versus the other? And when you take my marketing class, which will be the next videos you'll see, uh, you'll, we'll talk more about that. Okay? Oligopoly. Few very large sellers. Okay? Considerable investment is required, but only two or three sellers. Think about the cereal market. Cereal, Post, Kellogg's, General Mills. That's really all you have. Okay? They can pretty much dominate the market, but there is going to be some kind of competition with them. Uh, if you've ever noticed going to a supermarket, you might see Fruity Pebbles on sale. And I don't know if that's Post. Post is Fruity Pebbles. You might see Trix from General Mills also on sale because they want to uh, compete against each other. But there's only three big guys doing it. And with these three big guys, they can pretty much either control the market or have intense competition. Airline industry, okay, maybe now there's many different airlines, but there's still two or three very big ones. Even car companies, Ford, GM, Chrysler, that's really all there is. Yes, Tesla's there and all these uh, Japanese companies, but in reference to an oligopoly, they are competing against each, each other because it's only two or three. And monopoly, one seller, no close substitute. Okay? And there's barriers to keep others. Uh, monopolies in our country are illegal. But the most famous monopoly that there is, is a company called De Beers. 
Okay, they are a cartel. They control all factors of production of diamonds. Okay, and they do their best to keep everybody out. Whether that's still happening now or not, I'm not completely familiar with, but definitely up until about uh, 10 years ago, uh, that was the way it was. What they did was, if someone found another diamond mine, they would either drop, they would either try to buy the diamond mine from them, if not, they would drop the price of diamonds to put them out of business. Um, people don't know, that, but diamonds are not as rare as you think. Okay, they created this whole marketing strategy that diamonds are rare and a diamond is forever, but diamonds are not rare. Rubies and emeralds are more rare than diamonds. Um, but there's really no monopolies in our country, real business monopolies, but there are two types of regular monopolies, of other types of monopolies, sorry, which are natural and limited monopolies. A natural monopoly is one that is uh, created in a national interest so that you wouldn't have another company competing. The MTA is a natural monopoly. There's not someone else digging up the street to build another subway. Okay, uh, National Grid and Con Edison might be considered nat natural monopolies. Okay, we don't want another power company coming. It's going to be a huge investment, and it's in the public interest to have one company doing it as long as they keep the prices um, steady. Okay, and they operate under the scrutiny and control of federal agencies. Okay, the MTA, we know what goes on with them, and we know what goes on with the National Grid. No one pays $800 a month for a gas bill. Okay, uh, my gas bill is usually not more than $20 a month. Okay, and a limited monopoly is when the government issues a franchise license just limited in one little area. I have a limited monopoly to use the name Brooklyn Body Gear. I have an, and it's a limited monopoly to only sell underwear and sell apparel clothing. If I wanted something else, I would have to try to get another kind of, um, some kind of other quote-unquote limited monopoly, which is a trademark, to use uh, to use that name. Okay, that's a limited monopoly, just limited to that. Limited monopoly might be a patent. A drug companies always try to get a patent, which is a limited monopoly to try to, uh, so they can protect um, their R&D and they grant them a limited monopoly for a certain amount of time, they can sell it without any ha having any competition and that keeps innovation up. Okay, barter system. Barter is exchanging goods for goods when no money is involved. Okay, that's the way it used to be. Okay, um, specialization. This is about job specialization. Specialization separating manufacturing process into distinct tasks. Think of an assembly line. Someone builds the steering wheel. Someone builds the tire. Someone puts the brakes on. Someone puts the engine in. Specialization. The best thing about it is that you don't have to switch from one from one uh, task to another. And of course, you can create a product a lot more efficiently and a lot quicker. Okay. But the problem with specialization, which we will learn later on is people get bored, okay? Um, I don't care much about business development. Uh, just understand going forward that uh, we're going toward more towards a service economy. There are things that people used to do in the, before that they're not doing as much now. Uh, people used to do their own nails, everyone goes for manicures now. Um, if you had a swimming pool, maybe you took care of the pool yourself or you mowed your own lawn. Right now there's landscapers that do that. We want to pay people to do uh, more of the stuff that we used to do ourselves, and that's because uh, time is, is we, are, we live in a time poor society, people are working a lot harder uh, than they used to, a lot longer hours, so it's easier to pay someone uh, to do the job that we used to do, since our time and leisure time is now more valuable to us, okay? Okay, and competition, we already spoke about competition. Sustainability, just understand sustainability is that today, Everybody's thinking about recycling, sustainability. We don't want to just keep um, destroying our planet, so we want to um, do our best to do recycling and to try to use uh, products over and over. I take my coffee grounds and put them in a plant to recycle them instead of throwing them into the landfill. Okay? This is chapter one, guys. I hope you were happy about it. Read the form, chapter two very soon. Thank you very much. And if you remember, that's the way it used to be. I love you all.